Cloudflare have released the Sandbox SDK that allows you to execute code, manage files, and run processes in an isolated environment. Perfect for running untested code generated by an AI agent. But is this feature being released too late with companies like Daytona and Vercel who already have a Sandbox feature? What's the point of using Cloudflare's version other than the fact that it works with workers? Well, let's find out. And before we do, don't forget to hit subscribe. The Sandbox SDK already uses existing Cloudflare features like workers, durable objects, and Cloudflare's containers. The Sandbox application code runs in a Cloudflare worker, which communicates with a durable object via RPC, which manages the Sandbox lifecycle, like creation, activation, deletion, and so on, and also routes command to the Sandbox container which executes the command, captures the output, and the response flows back through the layers. Let's see how this looks like in code. Here is a simple bun project. With the Sandbox SDK and Wrangler already installed, a Wrangler JSON C file, which contains container information, Drupal object data, and migration for storage. It also contains a Docker file with the Cloudflare Sandbox image and also exposes this port for the durable object. The container itself installs Node 20, Python 3.11, and the latest version of Bun, all on Ubuntu 22, which gives you full Linux capabilities and also means you'll need Docker Desktop or something else if you want to run things locally. Let's write some code to execute Python inside the sandbox. We'll first create a function called run Python code that takes the environment argument, which we'll talk about later on, then we'll create a variable called sandbox, which uses the get sandbox function to either create or get an existing sandbox. We can import that function from Cloudflare sandbox, and then we can give our sandbox an ID. We can then create a variable called result, which runs sandbox.exec to execute this shell command in the sandbox. Then we can console log the output as well as any errors before returning the results. Since this is going to run in a worker, we need to export a default object with a fetch function that runs our run Python code function and then returns a response, which in this case will stringify the result. Since request is not used, we can give it an underscore. And if we go back to the top of the file, we need to export sandbox from Cloudflare sandbox so that the worker runtime registers this durable object class. And then beneath it, we can create a new type with a field of sandbox that uses the Drupal object namespace. Don't worry too much about the type error because this code is going to run in a worker that has access to this type. And that is pretty much it. Now with Docker running, if we run the sandbox, it should first pull and build the image before giving us access to this port, which gives us some information that includes the exit code, the output, and the command that was run. We can also see the output in the console. Let's go through a more complex example. In this file, we're using the Anthropic AI SDK and also getting the sandbox type from the SDK, which I forgot to do in the previous video for this type. Then we're getting the question value from the request and running that inside the Claude Haiku model with this prompt that takes the question, applies these parameters to keep it simple and remove any unnecessary values. Then we'll take the generated code, start a sandbox with the ID of demo user, and we'll put that code in a file called code.js using the write file function from the sandbox. Then we'll execute the code inside the file using node, but this could easily be bun. We're returning the response in this format and handling any errors. So with the sandbox running, if we post to our sandbox with this question, then we should get these values with the code that was generated based on the question and the correct output. Deploying our sandbox is very simple, but you do need to have a worker's paid plan. Once deployed, you should see your durable object and your container, which for mine, I forgot to rename from PyTest, so it's kept the same name. So technically with our worker URL, we could send a request to it with a different question and we should get this response benefiting from Cloudflare's global edge network. But that's not all. The Sandbox SDK also lets you manage processes, clone Git repos, create sessions, which are a bit like terminal tabs and much more. But the real question is why choose this over all the other options? If you're already bought into Cloudflare workers, want a simple TypeScript API to use sandboxes and want to run containers for more than 45 minutes or five hours, 
then this is a no brainer. But if you want something a bit cheaper with a Python SDK and with a few more features, then check out Daytona. But anyway, what are your thoughts on the Cloudflare Sandbox SDK? Do you plan on using it in a future project, especially if you're already using Workers? Let me know in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.